and welcome back to my channel, Good Effort Meg. Today we are going to be doing a small repair on the radio that I found at my local thrift store for $10. This radio it was manufactured by Sony in the 1970s. So my first inkling is that there's probably some dust or some kind of just general cleaning that needs to happen because the radio works fine. It's just when you turn the volume knob uh, to turn on the radio, there is some major crackling that happens. And sometimes the volume when you're listening to the radio will intermittently change just randomly. So if my gut is correct, the way that this knob potentially works is that there's probably some kind of carbon filament or something with another contact piece. And in electronics, if that gets dirt because of the buildup of carbon or if dust gets in there or what have you, it can cause just some extra resistance that the contact has to overcome, which can lead to crackling noises and just an unsteady connection. So that's what I believe the problem that we're gonna be fixing here today. But I hope you guys are super excited to go on this journey with me. I love fixing electronics like this, especially when they're really cool old electronics that I can potentially give a new life to. So I hope this inspires you and encourages you to go out and give it a, a try yourself. Um, but otherwise, just sit back, relax, and let's get started. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join our amazing community. So to start this repair off, we're gonna need a couple of tools and we might need some different ones along the way, but these are the ones that I think I'm gonna start with. So I just grabbed an assortment of Phillips head and flathead screwdrivers. I have my iFixit kit. This just has an assortment of different screw heads and tweezers and little scrapers and stuff for cleaning. And because I suspect that the cause of the crackling is a dirty potentiometer or rheostat or something along those lines. I picked up this mass airflow sensor cleaner. My dad told me that this should be safe to use on any like smaller electronics. And I just picked this up at my local auto shop because I don't have any place nearby that would have like an electronics cleaner. So we're gonna give this a try. So we'll see what happens. So here's a good look at the front of the radio. And here is a good look at the back of the radio. And if you watched my thrift haul video last week, then you now can see what I was talking about that I could tell somebody has opened this up in the past because it's missing a ton of screws. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. If you are also curious about this particular model of radio, you can look up more information. That's the model number right there. And whenever I'm look, working on electronics, I always make sure I have like a bowl or something or a magnet to capture my screws. Okay, so looks fairly simple. So we have our speaker here. And this is essentially our control board. Nothing is standing out to me as potential problems, but next I am going to take this screw and this screw out. Again, there are missing screws around, but hopefully that'll allow the top to drop down. Also, just as a safety tip, I have had this unplugged for quite a bit of time, so that way, the capacitors, if there was any charge on them, that would be completely dissipated at this time. If you're not sure how long to let it sit, you know, a day or two is always a good idea, um, especially with like older electronics. Just trying to carefully remove these screws because the wood has already split in some places. So I don't want to worsen that problem. So now if I lift, yes, perfect. I am very gently pulling. You never want to jerk anything around when working on electronics because you don't want to accidentally damage the bead. 
So I need to get under this board and get access. So I'm going to remove this screw here and I think these screws here. We'll try it out and see where we get. do so I don't add tension it's actually I grab a couple of my sewing triangles and just kind of prop this up at an angle so we don't damage anything now let's see what is holding me back this right here this is somewhere we're missing Pop these bad boys off. I'm just trying to get my fingernails under there. Sounds best to do that. I think if the knob we're worried about is this guy right here. Let's see if we can get this orange board taken off. So now it looks like there's a clip here, a clip here, and a clip towards the bottom maybe that we can pop off. And the reason why you can't really disconnect the wires in this radio is because they're all soldered on. Neat little wire wraps. I've never seen wire wraps like this before. Okay, very cool. So this is our tuning knob, which that's really cool. These two guys here, these are fuses. I'm just gonna do a quick inspection, make sure they're still good. Yeah, so these these things here, that one is still good, and that one is still good. So the cool thing about these fuses is you could actually see the filament in the fuse just like you would like an old school light bulb. So let's get a closer look at this knob. There we go. Ah, okay, it wants to go this way. That'll work as well. So this is our culprit right here. So I am just going to look. Ah, okay. So the way that this switch knob works is you see that little piece in there that's moving? It's like scraping along the bottom of what looks like almost like a vinyl record. Let's see me going back and forth with that. And if I go all the way to the left and click, that's the off position. And when I turn on the radio, click, it's on. It initially like starts crackling real bad. So what I suspect is that potentially there might be like dust and dirt in there that is dragging across. So as you adjust the volume, it's just real unsteady. So I'm going to start with cleaning that. I'm also gonna take a look at these leads because I think this is melted heat shrink. I'm honestly not entirely sure what this is, but I'm gonna I'm not seen that before. So I'm gonna clean that off and take a look and make sure that the wiring underneath here is okay. So we're gonna start with a light cleaning in here. So just reading what's on here, I think this should primarily be used outside, but I'm gonna do a little bit in here and I'm wearing a mask right now um that i normally use when i'm doing like yard work and stuff uh so i'm gonna start with like a little bit and if i need to do more then i might move outside where i have better ventilation to use this stuff i am just going to spray a little bit in there there we go i'm just gonna use this paintbrush to make sure that cleaner gets in there oh yeah <laughs> I see a lot of dust coming out. Yeah, you can see at the edge of my brush, there's a lot of dirt and dust. 
just gonna spray a little more and then I'm just gonna go back and forth pretty rapidly. This stuff is evaporating quite quickly. That cleaner works quite well. Even kind of reduce the resistance I was feeling there. Wow. I've never used this stuff before. That's that's quite impressive. <laughs> I like now I want to see what's going on. And then here to be clear, I am not cutting through the wire. I am only cutting through this like melted bit, which is really bizarre. And I just want to pull that back a little bit. Yeah, I just want to make sure everything looks good under here. That looks good. So I'm just gonna put that back. What I'm looking for there is just making sure that, you know, first off that the, <laughs> the connection is still being made. So the solder isn't damaged. Very nice. Wow, that is, that is so impressive. I might put a little cleaner on these guys just because that cleaner looks so nice. And I can't imagine this thing has been cleaned in a while. So let's, let's just give her some love. Sure, she'll appreciate it. Oh, dude, that's sick. Just giving her a little dusting, gently. So now I'm just going to do all of that in reverse and reassemble it and see if that fixed the problem. One of the things that I'm definitely making sure of are that those copper teeth are lined up and I'm just gonna pop this in with those clips. There we go, got one. I don't wanna bend those, there we go. Okay, so quickly I'm just going to make sure that we're all still moving. Everything's good, everything's good. Okay, so I'm gonna put the last few screws in the back and replace all the knobs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a blast opening everything up and showing you guys the process that I go through and showing you the things that I look for whenever I open up electronics. You can see it's not a terribly complicated process. You just need a handful of tools and you could just open it up and poke around. You might learn something new in the end, it might not fix the problem. It might not even work when you're done fixing it. But when I get a piece like this that was $10, I just, I can't, I can't pass that up. It's just, it's too good. Um, and the potential of having something cool to display in my home over here, I, I just had to have it. And I'm just so terribly happy with the way that it came out. I obviously can't play y'all music, I think. Um, I'm still trying to get familiar with YouTube's copyright laws, so I don't want to infringe on somebody else's property um, if they're playing a certain song on the radio or something. But I can promise you it sounds incredible and I'm just over the moon happy with this radio. Thank you guys again for all the support that y'all have shown me and my channel and becoming part of a community that I'm trying to build here. Uh, it's very, very exciting and I really do feel the love and support and I'm always open to taking y'all's feedback and, you know, recommendations if there's something y'all want to see. Obviously, all the projects that I do, I pay for with my own money, so I do have to stay within a certain budget and so some, some months might be more exciting than others and that's just me balancing, you know, my checkbook. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.